are listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Well, th- this week's show is brought to you by Extreme Terrain. When it comes time to upgrade or replace your Jeep's wheels and tires, it may often feel like a puzzle that you're trying to put together yourself. Well, luckily, Extreme Terrain has solved this puzzle plenty of times before and is here to help. That's right, Wendy, and here to clean up the differences of various options, Extreme Terrain host Sarah Riordan. It takes the time to talk about each option and explain the differences between them. If you're in the market for new Jeep wheels or just want to see what's out there, be sure to go to ExtremeTerrain.com today. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never driven anything but Jeeps. This show is for you. Josh, Tammy, Wendy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about Jeeps. Hey, I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I've got a trick for you for the next time you're working with the doors open. And howdy, it's Wendy, and on this episode, I discuss some crazy Halloween tricks and treats. Hi, I'm Tammy. Coming up in Jeep Life with Jeep Mama, I share my top five mods I would do if I had to start all over again. And I'm Tony, and sadly, the only thing I do here is push the buttons. Now the monkey presses another button. (laughs) Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. So in the last episode of the Jeep Talk Show, episode 459, I mentioned a story that's been getting a lot of attention in the Jeep world. And since we Jeepers are such a tight-knit community... I knew it would be just a matter of days, if not hours even, before video or other pictures of this tragedy would have surfaced. Sure enough, this week, dash cam footage from a Jeeper much further down the mountain shows the Red Wrangler come crashing down the hillside right in front of them. For those just catching up with the story, the passenger of that crashing Wrangler, 23-year-old Susie Rhodes, was ejected as the Jeep left the trailside and went tumbling down Black Bear Pass. She suffered severe spinal injuries and was life-lighted out of the area. According to the GoFundMe page right now that is set up for her, she is in stable condition now, but is going to have a long, hard trail to navigate before she's fully recovered. Rumors are she's going to be in recovery for two years before things are even remotely back to normal. I'm sure I speak for all of us here on the show when I say we wish her all the best. The video, which we will have a link to in the show notes of this episode at jeeptalkshow.com, shows the dash cam footage of what appears to be an ordinary trail ride from the perspective of a dashboard of another Wrangler that was traveling the same dangerous mountain pass that leads to Telluride on October 10th. What is critically important in this video is not the few seconds in the middle where it captures the doomed Jeep in mid-tumble as it careens across the trail in front of them, but before that, at around the two-minute mark, Something incredible happens that many are calling the difference between life and death. As Tammy and others have stated, the trails up in this region of Colorado are treacherously tight, very narrow, and yes, up very high. But it's the degree of tightness that is key here, because at the two-minute mark in this video, the Jeep recording, it has to stop. The, the, the Jeep has to stop, not the recording. The Jeep <laughs> reverses slightly and does a three-point turn to navigate the switchback. It was at that, it, the, the trail was that tight. And it was those few moments of that time that it took for that Jeep to complete the maneuver, which likely saved the life of anybody in that Jeep that day. You see, had the trail been wide enough to accommodate a natural turn instead of a three-point switchback, the Jeep coming down the hill would have likely landed right on top of this other Jeep. The speed, the force, the energy behind the mass coming down that mountain would have literally obliterated anybody inside that vehicle in its way save for maybe an armored truck, maybe, I don't know. But imagine if it was a soft top or just the factory roll bar on that Jeep. No survivors is how that headline would have read. Now, according to the YouTube post, the driver of the Jeep who recorded the video was alerted by a friend in another vehicle of the falling Jeep. But the driver was unsure as to where it was coming down, uh, coming down on the mountain from. In the video's notes, the driver wrote, What was not shown on the video is me slamming my Jeep in reverse and gunning it backwards, hoping to avoid a possible wider rock slide which you see actually coming down the mountain right behind the somersaulting Jeep. So, was it luck, or was it uh, other Jeepers' vigilance and good communication gear that saved this other Jeepers' life? What are your thoughts? I want you to join the conversation on our Facebook page right now. So, I think uh, it's uh, incredibly um, lucky 
um, I, I guess in a way, not lucky, not lucky, that they caught that video that the Jeep tumbled right there in front of them. I mean, there's yes. there's not a huge the- line of Jeeps going down the mountain, I don't think. And uh, I, th- I think that it was just a freak thing. It would be even be more of a freak thing if they had actually collided. But it can happen. Sure. It's, uh, it's yeah, scary I mean, to watch that video because it's so close. And you see when he makes that three-point switchback turn, he almost pauses for a moment to look at the scenery. And I think mm-hmm. that also helped to slow him down a little bit coming. But again, we don't know the communication. Maybe they were already saying, hey, something's going on. But kudos to the people behind for paying attention, too, to be able to alert that driver in the lead. Now, yeah, Josh, seriously. Now, Josh, I know that you're a very observant fellow, and uh, uh, Wendy, I don't, uh, I suspect you are as well, but um, did you, I, I don't think the, the cause of this accident has been mentioned yet, and whenever I saw this video, uh, I think Tammy actually put it up on uh, the Jeep Talk Show uh, page uh, first, and then I saw uh, Jonathan put it up on the Jeep Talk Show group. Uh, yeah, they're named the same, just to confuse the hell out of you, um, but the uh, I, I, I watched it many, many times, and I didn't see any rocks or dirt coming down before the Jeep. I saw the Jeep followed by debris. Well, the reason why I think that is is because the Jeep is bigger um, in the sense that it's longer. It's going to tumble, and so the, the tumble is going to help it clear uh, uh, you know, some, some, some of that hillside a lot more than just rocks rolling down the side. Now, I mean... Right as that video, um, right as that as that Jeep impacts the, the the trail right in front of the other Jeep who's recording it, um, you can see debris immediately following it. And you're mm-hmm. right, there's nothing before it, like as if there was a landslide or something exactly. like that. So you're 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 right in the sense that we don't necessarily know a hundred percent what is the cause of this, what started this. There are rumors that the e-brake wasn't set, that there may have been some. Um, uh, you know, so, some attention that wasn't paid to certain things, uh, whether or not it was a, a, a manual and it was just in neutral and the parking brake wasn't set. You know, I, I don't know whether it was the hillside that gave away because they were parked right on the edge uh, and, and it just happened to be a, a soft spot or something like that. I, I don't know. Stranger things have happened. We we likely may never know. Well, that's, um, that's kind of my point about the hillside part of it. I, I really think that we would have seen debris before the Jeep than not after necessarily i mean you, you're you would you would think then it would be a massive landslide that took the jeep with it but if we're talking about all of about a foot of ground oh next yeah to one absolutely tire, no it could have just been just, just like what you're saying but but i think that debris that would have been in front of the jeep that's what i'm saying i didn't see debris in front of the jeep i saw debris it was in, just in, gravel, behind it you know i mean it, it's something that wouldn't have moved more than a few feet and then all it of had a sudden, to be at least it, it, sizable enough to allow the the well, and the and the Jeep wheel itself, the weight of the uh, the wheel and the Jeep is going to push some of it down. I think it would have been more than gravel. I mean, that'd no, be, yeah. that'd be, that had that to be slippery graphite for that to happen. I, I'm Wendy? thinking I'm with Josh on this. I mean, it could have been parked there. They it could have gotten momentum and just sort of rolled off the side, as in maybe the brake wasn't set or something happened where the Jeep just starts to roll backwards. And then once it's cleared that, it gets momentum and then starts to flip and move. Oh, no, absolutely. And that's kind of my point is that I don't think it was something that gave way. I think that it has to be something else that happened. Mechanical. Yeah, uh, either the the driver or... I mean, I don't, I don't want to blame the passenger, but even, I mean, things have happened before where the, the passenger, not necessarily in, in Jeep stuff activity, uh, but uh, things, passengers have done things that have caused issues. Could uh, have been the dogs, too. You never know. They exactly. could have jumped in or done something. I mean, we just don't know. Exactly. So I forgot about the two dogs in the, in the vehicle. There's two dogs. You're yep. entirely right. Maybe it was in gear and it was parked and one of the dogs knocked it out of gear the, the e-brake wasn't set, and that's all it took. And she was mm-hmm. she was paying attention more to scritching the dog and what's going on over here than what the dog's tail just did, or or the dog accidentally, you know, kind of moving and bumping into the stick, and and suddenly it's out of gear, and now we're moving. Oh my God! And we're overside. You know, so yeah. I, yeah, anything could happen. I really would like to hear from from uh you know the girl who was the passenger in the jeep uh that uh you know from her perspective what what she thinks had had happened. Oh, and, and praying for her quick re- recovery, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be very quick. I'm it just, I'm just so glad scary. she's alive. Yeah, so. I know, yeah, but, seriously. 
But seriously, I, we, I mean, think about what she might have experienced. Just put yourself in that passenger side, have the Jeep start to roll backwards, and then have it go over the side. I, I can't even imagine what she must have gone through in that process until she's hopefully maybe knocked out and doesn't realize what's happening. But seriously, that's scary. I would imagine well, the majority of her injuries came from uh, being thrown thrown clear of the Jeep. It probably helped yeah. her, but I would imagine the majority of the injuries. I mean, when, when, when you read that it had... Uh, on the uh, last week's episode, I think it was that you had mm-hmm. read that she was thrown clear. I was like, "Oh, that's not good." Um, so, I mean, the only time oh, that, yeah, especially when you're talking about like on the side of a mountain, uh, <laughs> right? And, you know, that likely yeah. mm-hmm. that and the terrain, the kind of terrain yes. that's around, likely are the major contributors to the the severity of her injuries. Uh, you know, and it, we we've talked, we've reported about jeeps tumbling on trails before, and and unfortunately. We've had to report on on some lives that were lost on a couple of these yep. uh, on a couple of these occasions. Uh, some harrowing stories, in fact. Um, and and the fact that that she was ejected, likely Tony, I think you're 100 percent right, is probably the only reason that she's alive. Had she stayed in that jeep, had the jeep held on to her, um, a, a, whether it was a seatbelt that broke or maybe she wasn't wearing the seatbelt, whatever it was that led to her being ejected from the vehicle, that alone is likely the one thing that saved her. One more tumble. Um, you know, another hundred feet down the mountain, you know, the way that the Jeep would have landed, I mean, any number of things could have happened and we'd be talking about the story in a much different light. My, I was showing my wife that video, uh, actually from the, the Jeep talk show, uh, page. And, uh, she said, uh, oh, she must not have had her seatbelt on. And <laughs> when I told her she, the, the lady was ejected, I said, honey, I don't think a seatbelt would have done anything for this, uh, this type of, uh, roll and tumble and everything yeah. else. I, uh, the seatbelt was, I mean. Maybe a five-part harness would have kept her in there, but uh, not just your standard seatbelt. Well, and it, it's Sir. a soft top, too. They had uh, just the, like, looks like sheer material above. So, there, you know, mm-hmm. what rocks are coming in, hitting your head or whatever. I mean, it's probably what saved those dogs, too, that they could get out. Oh, that was the great oh, thing yeah. about the story. The dogs are found out later unharmed. And I thought yeah, that was great. Dogs, completely okay. Yeah, <laughs> That's so crazy. That's, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Go Jeep dogs. Go Jeep yes. dogs. Seriously. <laughs> well, we're going to switch gears here. And I'm going to say that they just don't know any better. It's not their fault. They're just a car site. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I had never even heard of them until today. But here they are making global news here on the Jeep Talk Show. Maybe I shouldn't give them the credit. Oh, well, well, I've got to pick on them. So at least they deserve to be called out. You see, this week, a little no-name site called Hot Cars released a top 10 list titled Jeep's All-Time Worst SUVs. Oh, my God. Thinking this ought to be good for a laugh, I clicked on the link to read the full article. At first, I was going along with them. At the top of their list, the number 10 position was just the cutest, cutest of all, the Renegade. And then came the new generation of Cherokee. At this point, I'm giving these guys a little bit of a pat on the back, so I decided to skim ahead and check out the rest of the list. I was shocked, horrified, left aghast from what I saw. One after another of my favorite Jeeps were listed. Not a single punch was thrown, and then I started reading about why they picked what I would consider some of Jeep's best work ever. Things like a recall of a window regulator, poor fuel economy, (laughs) too boxy of a design. Seriously? Too boxy of a design? Oh, come on. Or that a Jeep of the 40s and 50s era has too basic of a construction, poor all-weather equipment, and its original engine struggles to keep pace with modern highway traffic. Uh, yeah, jackass, because it's nearly 80 years old. Let's see how fast you run when you're 80 years old. (laughs) Now, if you want to see the whole list or would like to reach out to the author, one Gaia Zal. Isn't I? Yeah. She's an Italian writer who loves pasta, coffee, and blogging. Clearly, the perfect person to write such an expertly crafted expose on what are so definitely tremendous scourges to the automotive world that they should have never come to existence in the first place. Oh, the humanity! So, did your Jeep end up on the list? (laughs) I bet it did. Josh, I gotta, I gotta ask you uh, about this, uh, this next story. I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm jumping ahead. Is this the same intersection where the Cherokee and the JK Wrangler uh, ran up and over a, a cop car? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. It looks like a different intersection. I but thought it might, I thought, it might uh, be the same town. I thought this story was going to be finally we find out why the Cherokee <laughs> was on top of the cop car. 
<laughs> no, I forgot all about that story. Though. That was a good one. I'll have to see if I can't dig up some follow-up. And on I'm that sorry, one. guys. We will be sharing this uh, this image in the uh, the show notes for this episode. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I know pictures are great for podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if we would have time to get to this story or not. So I just threw this in there as as a little bit of a bonus. And we're just gonna file. Oh, this give them a we're bone. just gonna put this in the uh, that's what you get files. Okay, I like uh, it. A, a 16-year-old kid in San Diego steals a Jeep, has two other minors in the vehicle with him, either at the time of the theft or right after, two 16-year-old girls. They're seen speeding through the city and are, of course, pulled over because, you know, you know, stolen car, speeding, excessive speeding. speed limit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you bring in attention to yourself, that's what's going to happen. Well, sure. at least the police try to pull them over. They run multiple red lights with reckless abandon, and the chase was called off for safety reasons. Just minutes later, the Jeep crashes, of course. The driver either tries to run or is ejected and then tries to run. Either way, the Jeep ends up still in motion and he is run over, pinned to the ground, and the streetlight pole that he crashed into by the very Jeep that he stole. Yay, the Jeep won! <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> Say it with me now, folks. <laughs> Firefighters extracted the criminal and was ta- and he was taken to a local hospital with a shattered hip, broken oh, arm, and God. other non-life-threatening wow. injuries. Nice. At least during the many months that it will take for him to learn how to walk again, he'll have plenty of time to listen to the Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> non-life-threatening injuries until his mom got to the hospital and beat his <laughs> ass. Yeah, but just wait, wait a minute. This is in California. There'll be a civil lawsuit. Just wait. Oh, yeah. They're, right. They're, they're going to sue because the pole was in the way of the car. That's what's going to happen. You just oh. Well, and if the police never would have chased them, you know, they, they you know, this never would have happened worse. to begin with. They, they stole that yeah. car because they needed a ride. Because my boy was a good boy. If it had, uh, if the Jeep had proper security, it would not have been stolen. So this, this is mm. going to be an FCA uh, lawsuit. And, oh. and and which Jeep is it? Looks like it's a what is that? It looks like a it VW looks like a Grand uh, Wagoneer uh, to me. Yeah. It, it possibly could be a Cherokee, one of the newer generation Cherokees. I don't think so. I think it's like a Grand. Uh, I'm sorry, not a Grand Wagoneer, a Grand Cherokee. Um, and uh, it might even be like an SRT model or or something. I'm I'm not sure. I was trying Hard to, to see determine by the uh, by the wheels and the in the back end there. It's kind of mangled up. It's a little bit hard to see. Uh, one yeah. of the doors is open. Airbags are deployed. Yeah. Uh, it's at night. There's a lot of, you know, blue and red, you know, kind of from the police lights and everything like that. Uh, oh. Not the best picture in the world, but uh, but nonetheless, oh, definitely man. a Jeep and definitely one kid who's uh, hopefully going to rethink his future. When I was I a kid, when you saw a Jeep, you knew it was a Jeep. You couldn't get it confused got- with 15 other crossovers that were available for <laughs> about the same amount of money. <laughs> Well, we want to hear what you've seen in the Jeep world. If you've got a news tip or response to any one of our stories, be sure to let us know what you have to say. You can do it by phone or by email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out how. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, coming up in Tag Talk, have you ever wished you could silence that door chime? Josh has a few different solutions to quiet that beep the next time you need to leave the doors open. Hey guys, it's Steve from Iowa. Just calling you and trying to hang out from that eight inch snow we just got yesterday. It's ridiculous. Way too early for that stuff. Anyway, hey, uh, just calling to say keep up the good work. It was a great interview. I just heard it. So, you guys are doing an awesome job. I appreciate all the content you're giving us. Hey, I was calling to say that, uh, for the, whatever that, what is it? Man. Oh, easy trunk. That's what it was. Yeah, keep your junk in the trunk. Easy trunk. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great addition. All right, you guys. Have a great time, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Wendy, we recently yes. received an email. I'm sure you saw it. You read it. And uh, the, uh, the, the the listener that sent us the email gave uh, kudos to Tech Talk and Newbie Nuggets. Did you, did you see that email? I saw that. Yeah. I think that's exciting. We're reaching out to people. I think people I missed that one. All, all, I seem, information. all I seem to get is the negative ones. I don't well, know. <laughs> Josh, anytime they say anything positive about uh, Tech Talk, I figure it's a plant. You've uh, you've contacted oh, one of your oh, many yeah, friends. Right. It's just me. Look, with a I'll work uh, on your Jeep, but you got to do something <laughs> for me. <laughs> but anyway, I, I remember thinking that uh, that, that uh, the, all the great help that I get from my, my co-hosts here and uh, Wendy, I... But, Honestly, when I read that, it was like, well, of course, yeah, she's and and you just you hit the ground running. I mean, just like they say, mm-hmm. you know, in yeah. the interviews, yeah, we we're gonna whoever is gonna get this uh, job needs to hit the ground running and multitask 
and uh, drink coffee. A self starter and uh, yeah, well self starter exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so c- congratulations on that, and you know that yeah. brings us to uh, some uh, some more another chance to impress people with uh, newbie nuggets. That's right. What? Where's the noob? Noob. 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 Hey, newbie. Newbie. Noob. Nugget. It's time for newbie nuggets. Well, I know that 2020 has been a weird year so far, but what is it with the decorated Jeeps for Halloween? <laughs> Have you seen any of them? I've seen so many on Facebook. I thought it'd be fun to mention and see what the listeners are doing this year for Halloween. So you can Google Jeeps and Halloween in the same sentence for some really interesting and great images and maybe some ideas. Now, in the past, I've seen charity events that include a trunk or treat. It's where lots of vehicles set up in a parking lot or a park. Your trunk, vehicle, and perhaps yourself are decorated with whatever theme you decide. Kids and families stroll by in their costumes and you pass out candy with lots of spookiness, etc. Good fun for charity. Now, I've also seen some small town businesses come together to create a safe area for kids to trick or treat by entering each business. There have even been some charity events where you dress up your dog and participate too. Lots of stuff that happens this time of the year. Well, with lots of events canceled this year for Halloween, I've noticed lots and lots of Jeeps decorated for Halloween on all the different Facebook pages. Now, I don't know if it's just this year and we're tired of being cooped up, but have you seen the number of postings where people are using skeletons and placing them all over the Jeep? Yes, skeletons. You know, the ones you can get at your local craft store? They're on the front of Jeeps, wrapped around the winch, or behind hanging onto the spare tire. I saw one photo that had skeletons on top of the Jeep and on the side hanging onto the doors, literally as if they were kind of like hanging on for dear life. Now, there have been lots of uses with chains, real and plastic, for more effect. So I'm guessing Jerry's Pirate Off-Road Facebook group loves these ideas. uh, There are even Jeeps decorated with torn-up zombies for a great effect. I even saw one of those. Pretty clever people out there for sure. And I'm not sure how road-worthy these creatures are, but it sure does say Halloween. And by the way, if you look at our show notes, I have quite a few pictures up of this thing that I'm doing this time. So... Now, perhaps one of the craziest things I've seen is the handprints all over in red blood. Have you guys (laughs) seen this? I mean, seriously. Who thought this was a good idea? Is it to show you ran over the zombies or that they tried to get you and you made it through? Or is it that your kids got into paint and smeared it all over your Jeep? I read that someone started it with theatrical blood found at a local party store and then used rubber gloves and then smeared your handprints all over the place. And how does this wash out, by the way? I'm thinking if you leave it on till after Halloween, there'll be some image from the sun bleaching the handprints. Glad it's not on my Jeep, that's for sure. And it seems to me that a white Jeep would be best for this type of decoration. So sorry, Tony, this is where your red Jeep doesn't do so well. <laughs> and talk <laughs> about lighting. <laughs> talk about lighting. Last week's episode 459, we chatted around the campfire discussing night crawling and the many lighting options underneath the body. Well... This is a perfect time to change out the colors. I've seen so many Jeeps that had glowing blue, orange, or purple lighting underneath. It looks really cool, and for a charity event or just driving around town with your skeletons, it says Halloween for sure. Now, wheeling off-road with any of these decorations could pose a bit of a challenge. The first tight spot that I drive through is going to rip those skeletons off the sides and tops of the Jeep. The ones in front and back might make it, so I'm not too fond of skeletons in the closet or on my Jeep. But for me, it would be just something else I'd have to stop and pick up off the trail. Now, I won't be decorating my Jeep this year unless there's, unless there's a charity event. I might decorate the trunk. Can't, see, can't wait to see what these creative people do for their Jeeps for Christmas time. Is it going to be Santa and a reindeer or deer caught in the grill and splatter all over the hood? <laughs> How about Christmas lights all over the Jeep? Would you decorate your Jeep for Halloween or Christmas? And what about other holidays like Valentine's, Easter, Fourth of July? I can see it now. A trend has started. So, you guys, would you decorate your Jeep? And if so, what would you do? Light skeletons? What What would you do? I actually have a great idea. I, uh, Wendy, you may have seen this because I know you peruse uh, Facebook from time to time. Josh, not so much. Uh, I recently saw a, a picture. Uh, you know these garbage cans that they have at the, the self-service gas stations, usually on the outside of that little center island? Yeah. Somebody had taken uh, a, a body in a plastic okay. bag 
and wedged it into one of those trash cans. Oh, my God. And, oh, and, oh my God. It was like a, a body of a female, a, a young, it looked real. A young <laughs> female. And it turned out to be one of those uh, ultra realistic sex dolls that somebody oh, had for thrown away. So I'm course, thinking that of if course in, Tony found this. instead of you, <laughs> <laughs> instead of you <laughs> trying to get, I mean, and yeah, and that brings, brings up another question. When you get tired of your sex doll, what do you do with it? I mean, it's kind of hard just to throw it in the dumpster. Yeah. But I anyway, it for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, go to Craigslist, put it on there and, and make the uh, suggestion looking for a great, <laughs> A decoration for your Jeep for Halloween. <laughs> so oh, that's boy. that's my idea. And and actually for Christmas it would work out too. Just put hang some lights off of it. Josh, Previously I, loved. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna say, Josh, looking for love. <laughs> just wait. We're gonna we're gonna get a call or an email from Tony. Hey, can you guys bail me out? I'm in jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just a doll, I swear. It was I swear. Real. Yeah. We're just friends. Oh goodness! Oh well, uh, I, I can't say you, Josh? that. I mean, have, that have my, you my Jeep has uh, has made it into my uh, my Halloween decorations multiple times in the past. And uh, for anybody new to the show, Halloween is one of my favorite uh, holidays, oh. and and I go all out. Um, and this year, uh, because of everything, I, I haven't really done a, much for decoration. I'm probably going to dial it way back this year. But um, uh, one of the things I've done in the past was uh, make the Jeep a crime scene. And, and I've done this in a number of different ways before. I've, I've made it a crime scene from the inside uh, with the bloody handprints and, and like oh. the blood drips and things like that. And um, I've set up skeletons inside the Jeep, uh, you know, in funny positions and things like that uh, before. Um, uh, one, of the other, one of the first things that I did uh, with the Jeep was I, uh, I made a dummy, you know, uh, with a set of like overall coveralls. And I, yes. I filled those up, uh, put some yeah. boots on it, you know, stuff like that. And, um, and I put the... Um, uh, uh, Basically, where the head would be would have been for that um, uh, underneath one of the tires, um, okay. and then cool. you know, splattered some watermelon, <laughs> splattered some watermelon around to make it look like you know like something had happened. Uh, you know, yes. a tool in one hand and a light in the other. Um, you know, and and make it make it uh, with a light underneath of it and everything like it just happened type of thing. And and I got a lot of uh, a lot of comments on that one. That was pretty good and and stuff. So I mean, I I've, I've, I've incorporated strobe lights and and other things and stuff. I've got a lot thing that i that i do and stuff with the with the with the house for the the big haunt install and everything so yeah i mean i've, I've done all the above nothing like quite the pictures that you have shared with us in the show notes though wendy <laughs> not not in the decoration like as in it's meant to be decorated while you go down the road mine's yes. more of an art installation if you will <laughs> got it yep well it's interesting too i don't know if you've checked out any of their recent craft stores but you can get skeletons in almost anything anymore dog horse squirrel uh, goats, uh, you name oh, yeah. it. It's kind of spooky with their cats, you know. You know, I draw the line at uh, spider skeletons. That's not how it works, people. <laughs> they have those no. too. <laughs> yes, I know. You have, lots, you have lots of options out there to decorate. It's still early enough. <laughs> so, oh, well, if you have a picture of your decorated Jeep, send us an email or contact us and let us see your ideas. And if you have a topic or suggestion for newbie, newbie nuggets, I'm all ears. For, for more info, check out my YouTube channel and Jeep 4-1-1 with more tips, tricks, and techniques. Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? I love the show. I've been listening to you guys for free for, I don't know, years now, and I figured I'd like, time to give back. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. It'll just uh, help help the show out, and, and then in the end, it'll be Jeep Talk Show in my ear holes, you know? Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. It'd be nice to give back to uh, so that you guys can continue on, because if they love the show, then why shouldn't you, why shouldn't you give back just a little bit. All right, you rat bastards. That's all you people that are listening for free. You need to be a paid subscriber. Go over to uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and you'll see where you can go over there and become a paid subscriber. Uh, a big uh, hats off, tip of the hat, however you want to say it, to uh, those of you that uh, are former rat bastards. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of it or not. Uh, I posted up on uh, uh, various parts of social media today uh instagram being the uh, the, the first one uh, a new uh rat bastard sticker a proud rat bastard sticker 
It's that, nice. <laughs> that we're going to be coming out with. And uh, to follow up some good news, my uh, my daughter uh, did a much better uh, rat bastard drawing than I did. So I'll be changing mm-hmm. that out for that cartoonish uh, three-year-old uh, drawing that that I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which version did I see? The three-year-old cartoonish oh, okay. version. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I went to Fiverr. Do you remember when Fiverr used to be five dollars? Oh, yeah. It's not anymore. I went. Yeah. I went to Fiverr and basically explained to somebody what I wanted, and they said, "Sure, I could do that for one hundred and fifty dollars." Whoa! I'll take like, the three-year-old cartoonish version. Right. <laughs> it looks fine. I like it. Dollar option for five dollars. Well, it has yeah, a like charm, it. you know. Yes, it And does. if I had any young children, I would have blamed one of them for doing it, and it would be go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and those that know me would know the truth that I actually drew it. So, uh, but uh, but anyway, we'll have those stickers available. So, be a paid subscriber uh, in these desperate times and money's hard. We need you to give some of it to us. No, we understand that if you can't if you can't be a paid subscriber, we certainly understand. We just hope you uh, continue to uh, to enjoy the show. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to record a segment this week. Uh, Wendy and I went to Oklahoma. I just returned literally moments ago, jumped out of the truck, ran into the Nikki G recording studio slash closet under the steps, oh, and I recorded great this. Place. So uh, I told Wendy that I wanted to get a tattoo, and she said, she suggested that. I get it in a place that doesn't matter. So, henceforth, we drove out to Oklahoma. (laughs) (laughs) I got to say, I enjoyed Oklahoma. People were great. Made me feel at home. But I will say that uh, Oklahoma, cannabis is legal, which explains why I couldn't find a bag of Doritos anywhere in that place. It was horrible. (laughs) Read in the newspaper that 13 people were injured in a twister, which all I could say is, man, those they really take their board game seriously out there. <laughs> I knew he was gonna- Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking automobile. Over- overall, I-, I think Oklahoma is okay. Oh, no. There's the groaner. <laughs> and just remember, <laughs> no matter how bad you think you have it, there are still people living in Oklahoma. Ouch. All right, boys and girls. <laughs> All right. This is Nikki G, and I'll chat at you later. You have a good one. Bye. That was literally five episodes worth of material, folks. That he crammed into he's, one episode. Well, he's he he put in for vacation, so he's he's got some making up to do. You know? well, I think vacation did him well. I, I can imagine that long drive <laughs> helped him think of uh, all these great Oklahoma jokes. And you know, he, and the I'm, best and barbecue I'm thinking sauce. He's not going to be invited back, so you know. <laughs> no, no, clearly, you know, the, the best barbecue sauce I've ever had though was from Oklahoma. So I, I got to give them credit for that. At least the Oklahomians know how to barbecue. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the point where we normally announce the winner of any uh, giveaways that we recently had. Had a great oh, interview. That's right. Yeah, we had a great giveaway. Yeah, we we're going to be yeah, doing last yeah. week. Yeah, I can't wait to hear about who the winners are and what I they know. got. I know who is it. Tell yeah, me, tell butter, us. Butter it up, guys. You, you guys already know. I know what you're doing to me. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a we have a problem, and I don't want to, I don't want you to panic, but we had a couple of callers uh, from uh, that uh, that great uh, place. The the place that uh, I only recently found out the actually Nikki G exists. Was talking about Oklahoma, yeah, <laughs> this place that <laughs> that actually exists. I, I, for years, I thought it was just something that uh, parents sold their kids to uh, scare them so they would go to sleep. Uh, Canada. Oklahoma. We had a couple of calls from Canada, and of course, we clearly state in the rules of the giveaway that you have to be in the forty-eight states of the continental United States. So I need to. Con- I just found this out tonight when I was going through and uh, trying to find out uh, the, who the winners were, and uh, so I, I I really have to uh, see what we're going to do about that. So we will be announcing the uh, the winner next week, episode four sixty one, uh, the uh, the giveaway. And remember, there's four of them. There is the uh, the main easy trunk giveaway, and then there's three. Um, 
easy window giveaways, which uh, I may get one of those. I got to check with my wife. I think she really, cool. really like yeah. those. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so I, I did. I forgot to mention last week, and uh, I apologize. Uh, the um, the original Jeeps, the book, the autograph book, the original Jeeps is still in play. So no, come on, I know, people. I know. A week later, no way. Yep. Oh, well, two weeks actually. That's right, two weeks. Yeah. Look, so, if there wasn't rules in place for this sort of thing, I'd take it. <laughs> People are missing out. So you guys can uh, still call in for that one. You'll have to go back to uh, the uh, uh, 458, I believe, uh, if you did not hear the phrase that pays. Uh, actually, I think it's this, the, the original Jeeps, but uh, double-check that by going back and listening to that episode. But uh, What does he mean by you people? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so uh, anyway, check that out and uh, call in and get that giveaway. It's a great giveaway. The uh, the the author uh, checked with me just this past week, saying, "Hey, what's the deal? I'm doing all this free stuff, and you haven't told me who the winner is yet." So, call in and be the winner. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I just, I, it's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! You know, there are many times when working on a vehicle, on any vehicle, you need to have the key in the ignition and one or more of the doors open. Usually this means one of two things. Well, two things, really. One, that the dome light is going to be on, and two, the door chime or door buzzer, whatever you want to call it, is going to be wailing incessantly for hours on end. Mm -hmm. Insert mother-in-law joke here. (laughs) Uh, Unless you've worked in the automotive field for years and have a keen ability to ignore such racket, I suggest you get a tool that's helped many a technician over the years. They're called door buzzer shutoff tools, and they are a neat little device uh, designed to do just that, shut off the door buzzer, so that you can work in peace and quiet while you listen to the Jeep Talk Show. Okay, of course, that's the one of the many reasons to get a set of these, but all kidding aside, they're inexpensive, they store very easily, and usually come in pairs so that you can work from both sides of the vehicle with the doors open. Okay, so let's say you're a cheap rat bastard, and you don't want to spend the $20 or less that it would take to make your life a lot easier. Yeah, well, there are other ways to shut up the noise coming from the garage. First, you could ask her to leave. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Actually, on some Jeeps, the door chime is a little box tucked up under the dash above the driver's side kick panel. If you are able to locate it and you can get to it, you can simply unplug it and you're going to be good to go. Just remember to plug it back in when you're done, as these are oftentimes a critical part of the security system for most Jeeps. The other thing you could do is find the fuse box and uh, find the fuse for that circuit in the fuse box or distribution panel and pull it. Be warned, though, this may kill other circuits, too, and if something like stereo work or lighting work is what you're doing, you may make things hard on yourself. Another option is to try and duplicate the design of the door buzzer shutoff tool itself. You may be so inclined to try and use a coat hanger to do this, but that's not going to work since coat hangers are made of soft steel, not spring steel, and it won't work the same even if you bent it into the same exact shape. Now, you could try to disconnect the door pin switch from the rest of the system, but if the Jeep is old, there is a good chance these pin switches are degraded and could break if messed with. I've heard some people using a block of wood wedged between the door frame and the door pin and a bungee cord to keep the tension. This may be the best solution yet, but comes with a risk that you could break the pin switch or dent something on the body. Also be advised that on some vehicles, the door switch that turns the dome light on and off, as well as that damn buzzer, is located in the latch mechanism itself and not so easily unplugged. Sometimes, though, you can bypass these switches by lying to them. Simply use a screwdriver to act like the stud on the door jam and manually move the latch over to the closed side. This may work, but don't forget to operate the door handle, and when you're all done with your work, to release it before you close the door or you may be in for a rude surprise. So I'll leave it up to you to decide what is the best way to keep your Jeep quiet when you want to work on it with the doors open. For those who are so interested, I will post up a link for you to get one of those uh, door uh, door buzzer uh, uh, tools yourself. So let me ask you, would this work on a Wrangler where you take the doors off? Uh, my wife drives down the road and it's beep, 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 beep. She likes the open air, but uh, the buzzer just keeps going. See, on the Wranglers, the, the door pins are very easy to get to, um, and you can just sort of unplug them. Uh, and in that case, uh, you're, you're going to be good to go because the door pins are essentially still in the door jam, in the door, in the door, and uh, it's thinking that, uh, yeah, that you have the door open, and you're going to be trying to drive with the door open. It's going <laughs> trying to remind you, hey, you're not supposed to do that. So, yeah, and in, in, in especially in the older Wranglers, the, the YJs and the TJs, they're very easy to get to. It's right there in the kick panel. It's, it's one wire, and you should be able to – there's a quick disconnect – 
uh, that you can go ahead and just uh, unplug that really quick and plug it back in. Yeah, I was messing with you. Uh, but it's, uh, it's it actually looks like a little fuse, uh, and uh, we, uh, we removed that long ago. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Jeep actually thought ahead on that one, so it made it mm-hmm. uh, really easy to keep that from happening. I just wish they did that on the, uh, the other vehicles, too. Well, anything to add? Maybe you have a question for Tech Talk or a topic you would like for us to cover. Just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send us a message. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Josh, I don't know. It's been a while since you did that uh, that gathering of uh, those questions and those answers. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any coaching involved? Did you give people ideas about what to say? I mean, no, that was very actually, imaginative. Actually, done from a, a Jeep show uh, a couple of few years back, and uh, I just I had the uh, the, the voice recorder uh, in my hand uh, and um, using the uh, the Zoom H1, I believe, is what I had at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just went around and I was like, "Hey, do you mind if I ask you a question?" And I had the recorder in my hand and I was recording. I just kept it kept it going. And, and I'm just, I was like, I'm going to ask you where you listen to the Jeep talk show and there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. And most people were just like, okay, you know, like whatever. And, uh, and so I go up to him and I was like, where do you listen to the Jeep talk show? And I would just get the most random answers. (laughs) And, and it was, it was great because, you know, once they knew that there was no such thing as a wrong answer, um, and, and sometimes I'd say you, it's okay to get creative. There's no, there's no wrong answer. And they're like, oh, okay. And it's like, you know, in the bubble bath. You know, and it's just like, oh, okay, that works. <laughs> it was really good. Now, uh, and, and I've got to ask this because I know Nikki G would like to know, how were you able to do this and not be arrested? Well, I had my pants on. <laughs> so, I mean, it that, was, that's, it's a uh, critical, critical of part. Of I figured the you were going to say. You got to have your pants on. <laughs> I figured you were going to say it was sock placement. <laughs> I was just going to say, well, it has to do yeah, with one kind of goes with the other. So. <laughs> God. Are you living the Jeep life? From mall crawlers to weekend warriors, from daily drivers to weekend wheelers, it's all about the Jeep life, and it's all good. It's time for Jeep Life with Jeep Mama. Hey guys, I'm trying to get caught up on the shows, and I still find myself commenting on a recorded show. (laughs) (laughs) Just a quick clarification, having a headlamp camping is a good idea. I was just sharing I very rarely use it, and honestly, I don't even use my phone light that often either. In the past year, having a light walking around camp didn't seem to be a needed item for me. So I wondered why. Maybe I have the eyes of a mountain lion. Seriously, though, after listening to your comments, I had to think, why am I not using a light that often at night? I don't even use one when I walk or dog at night in the campground that has no night lights. Then I realized these stars in the middle of nowhere places we camp really light up the sky. So maybe that's it. Josh, I will have to agree with you on the pillow. You even reminded me one time and I still forgot. (laughs) Tony, that rock in Moab is on the trail top of the world. Yes, people pull to the very edge. This past spring when I was on the trail, I said no effing way. I set the record for the furthest back from the edge picture. (laughs) Tony, you're correct. It could go at any moment. The guy who was my trail guide when I was in Moab the first time, he has lived there his whole life and wheeled that trail many, many times. He said he never parks his Jeep on the edge because of exactly what you said. Who knows when it will break off and fall. Wendy, I have no shame in not tackling an obstacle I don't feel comfortable with. I've always been that way. I have nothing to prove. I'm out wheeling because I enjoy it and don't want the day to end poorly. I'm okay with going around and taking a bypass if it just doesn't feel right for me at the moment. Okay, more top five with Jeep Mama. This time, my top five Jeep modifications I would do if I had to do it over again. Now that I've had some experience with my Jeep off-road, I can look back and share with you what I would do differently. First, I'm glad I wheeled my Jeep in stock form because I was able to learn what my Jeep is capable of 
and how to pick a good line. Once I felt like I outgrew that level of wheeling I was doing, I upgraded my Jeep. I went with a 3.5 lift on 35 inch tires. If I had to do it over again, I would do a few things different before that lift. The first modification I would have made was Jeep Cables, a veteran owned company up in Josh's neck of the woods. I recently installed them in my Jeep and I wish I would have done it sooner. Adding the winch and off-road lights to my Jeep added a little extra pull on my current OEM cables. I just posted a couple of videos on YouTube that shows the install as well as what happens to your stock cables when you overload your OEM system by adding a winch and other electrical upgrades. You could already see the discoloration on my alternator and the cable coming from my alternator. The wires were already overloaded and getting super hot. The next modification I would have done was rock sliders. Not only do my barricade off-road rock sliders protect my Jeep, they double as a sidestep. Necessary when you lift your Jeep so you don't look foolish getting into your lifted Jeep. My rock sliders from day one have protected my Jeep and the sound of them sliding over the rocks has become a sound I really like. Even before the lift and bigger tires, I would have upgraded the stock tires on the Rubicon. I would have replaced them with the Rodian MTX 33 inch tires. When you are stock, a good set of tires will do wonders when you're off road. And those Rodian MTX tires, I feel were a lot better than the BF Goodrich tires that came with my Jeep. I am currently in the process of working with Nexon to get another set of 35s for my Jeep because I love them so much. I have to replace the current ones because I have put over 40,000 miles on them this year. They're still holding up good, but I think it's about time I replace them. Steering would be the next upgrade before my lift. I would go with the Yetting steering systems from SteerSmarts like I currently have. Their components are so beefy. I have hit them so many times with rocks and they've held up awesome. Plus the benefit for the JKUs is the steering attenuator or now they call it the Griffin. I reviewed the product on episode 176 of the Jeep Talk Show. We also interviewed Ron North with Steer Smarts on episode 301 about their steering system. The attenuator or the Griffin helps with the Wrangler's jittery steering and the bump steer. I'm not sure if those are problems with the JT or the JL. I would be interested in hearing if anyone out there would know. Then rounding out the top five would be an upgrade to my OEM front drive shaft with a Tom Woods custom drive shaft. Adding a lift and bigger tires will eventually wear out that stock drive shaft. You will know when it's starting to go by getting under your Jeep and looking right above your drive shaft you will be able to see the grease splatter above the drive shaft. If you want more Jeep Mama's Top 5, go check out my YouTube channel. I have 44 Top 5 videos and 52 how-to videos. Next week, tune in as I share my Top 5 accessories that didn't work for me. So, Tammy, uh, if you would, uh, do me a favor and uh, measure the tire, the tread depth, on your uh, Rodian MTX tires, forty thousand miles sounds a little low uh, for for uh, the wear on tires. And I know that's one of the questions that a lot of people have had about the Rodian uh, MTX is what kind of uh, uh, mileage can you get out of them? Nobody wants to spend uh, you know over a thousand dollars for tires that they'll have to replace very often. And uh, really, really, I mean, if you just just got the the feels for a a new set of tires, I I understand, but. Uh, I like to know exactly what the uh, the tread depth is, and I'm sure our listeners would as well. Yeah, I mean they they say you know for mud terrain tires the average is about forty thousand miles. In general, you could probably get you know uh, maybe another ten thousand miles out of those. I mean uh, mud terrain aren't going to last as long as an all terrain or a highway tire, um, just because of the aggressive pattern. There's going to be more resistance. There's going to be um, you know more friction, um, uh, more friction, and, and all of that leads to to faster tire wear. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, yeah, whether or not they're completely worn out, but yeah, I don't know. Measure that in 30 seconds of an inch. That's that's going to be how all tire tread is measured. It's in 30 seconds. Uh, we're going to need to know that 
number um, tread gauges that you can get from parts stores, or you can just roll up to um, you know any tire shop and say, hey, can you measure my tread depth really quick? Maybe hand them a couple bucks. You know, they'll, they'll usually be happy to do it for you. Um, and they'll give you that number for you, and uh, and then you can you guys can compare. It it really would be a, a good math. I mean, uh, you know, good information to find out uh, because I mean, completely different vehicles, completely different driving habits and and terrain and and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it'd be uh, be some some interesting numbers. Wendy, Josh, have you guys seen the new uh, Craigslist quarter? Oh God, no. no. It's got the the last uh, or the bottom. Uh, I don't know. Uh, eighth, uh, eighth of an inch, three eighths of an inch cut off so that when you put it in the, the tread of the tire, it looks like it's uh, got a lot of tread left on it. Oh, for <laughs> F's sake. <laughs> I saw that, I saw that the other day and I went smart, oh, man. Don't, don't, don't work hard, work smart, <laughs> work smarter. Gosh. Well, how does Tammy's Jeep life compare with yours? We're always looking for Jeep stories. So contact us and let us know what your Jeep life is like. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. Extreme Terrain has done it again with their newest release, a how-to video made specifically to support Jeep Wrangler owners on their hunt for new wheels and tires. Hosted by Extreme Terrain's Sarah Riordan, the goal of the video is to help customers sift through all the options to find their ideal setup. The video covers important topics like how to choose the correct wheels, how to choose the right size of tires for the suspension that you have, and she even goes over additional parts that may be needed for specific applications. Did you know that Extreme Terrain also offers free mountain balance on a large selection of wheels with a corresponding tire purchase? All you need to do is head over to the dedicated wheels and tires page on Extreme Terrain's website. The filters will narrow down the options based on things like size, offset, style, finish, brand, all that good stuff. From there, you can navigate to the product pages and view images of specific tire setups, giving you a better sense of the end results. Extreme Terrain's dedicated customer service team is also on hand to provide professional advice on lift kits, modifications, effects on the speedometer, tread type, and all kinds of other things. So whatever generation Wrangler you drive, turn to Extreme Terrain to get the best advice and selection. Hey guys, this is uh, Zach from uh, northern Colorado actually, and I was calling because I was listening to one of the episodes. And, uh, Josh was asking for people to mention their most rewarding Jeep experience, and personally, mine was Last summer, I, I had the opportunity to take a week off of, from work and go out to Buena Vista, Colorado, and attend All for Fun 2019. And honestly, it's 400 Jeeps that show up to the middle of nowhere, or, you know, like Empire, Colorado, Buena Vista, uh, Telluride. They, you, you never know where it's going to be that year, but it's 400 rigs, and... Uh, there's live music, they feed you, you stay out there for a full week. Um, it's honestly one of the most rewarding things just because I got to spend a week away from work with my friend. And I mean, even the, even the points where you're, you're four days in, you're covered in sweat and dirt and you're just trying to, like, you're cruising through the nearest town trying to find a community shower so that you can wash the stank off from four days. It's an awesome experience, and honestly, I'm super bummed out that COVID kind of ruined that this year. I had my tickets and everything. I had my uh, my reservation for Awful Fun 2020, and I, I happened to miss it because they they shut it down, and they only allowed you know certain members from Mile High Jeep Club to actually attend. So, oh. a little bummed out, but there's always next year. So, hopefully, this, that, that'll be what I attend next year. And, uh, like I said, my most rewarding experience. Y'all keep up the good work and keep me entertained while I'm at work. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. Well, thanks, Zach. And, and really, I'd like to see some more information about that. If you could email us uh, a link to, to maybe their Facebook page or, or to the event site, uh, I'd really appreciate that. And we'll see if we can't uh, maybe even get one of the event organizers on the show for an interview or something like that. Really cool. That sounds like one of a really amazing Jeep event and uh, off-road event. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm in the wrong part of the nation. <laughs> we don't have anything like that out here. <laughs> Well, you know, um, t when Tammy was talking uh, in her segment in Jeep Life, and she mentioned something about, you know, not tackling an obstacle, whether or not, you know, if, knowing she's not ready for it, you know, something like that. And, and it, uh, it really is a chord that we've, we've struck here often on the show and, and, and have talked about, you know, trail etiquette and things like that. And in fact, uh, we had a listener right into the show with a story that kind of falls uh, in suit with all of that. And, uh, and he says, hey, I recently just found your podcast and I really like it. 
We have a small core group that I ride with. We travel all over the southeast, and, and none of us trailer. The largest tri- tire size we have in our group is 37 inches, with most of us on 35s. Uh, our Jeeps are mildly built and, and always a work in progress. Full disclosure, most of us do have upgraded drive lines, chromoly axle shafts, drive shafts, and, and steering, but that's really about it other than the lift kits and the tires. While on our last trip to Windrock, we did Trail 15, a double black diamond. We made the trip specifically to do that trail because it had been dry for a couple of weeks. And I guess this is a trail where if you spill a bottle of water, it completely changes. Now, we walked the trail and picked our lines before putting a single tire on it. We all made it up with zero problems or even sing, uh, pulling a single winch line. We went back to the bottom to watch other groups that were there to had, who had given us some crap about our shiny JKs. They were in really well-built XJs and a few built JKs. We proceeded to watch one flop, one snag and break a drive shaft, a few winch, several near flops, and a huge JK on one-ton axles and 40-inch tires with a turbo diesel struggle to even take the same line that we did. Moral of the story? That is when we realized it's more about learning how to drive your Jeep and what you have. You don't know how to drive it. It doesn't matter how well-built the Jeep really is. Love the podcast. Thanks, Matt T. Thanks, Matt. And it's uh, stories like that, and it's those kind of perspectives that make guys like you my heroes. Seriously. It's, it's really, that's the kind of uh, point that we've tried to make here on the show a lot of times, where it doesn't matter if, you're, if you've are got a turbo diesel and one-ton axles and 40-inch tires. If you don't know what the hell you're doing, well, none of that gear is going to make it make it any better for you. Um, and, and honestly, it's probably going to do more damage to the trail than it is going to do, uh, you know, justice to your pride, as it were. So, you know, really it comes down to learning how to wheel and learning how to use the equipment that you have. It doesn't matter if you got 40s. It doesn't matter your tire size. It doesn't matter your armor and anything else like that. I mean, yes, it does to a certain extent, but really start off with what you got. Get out there, learn how to use it, learn how to protect it, and learn how to wheel right and safely. And by the time you are on one tons and 40s, well, you're going to be doing stuff that everybody's going to wish that they could do. They'll probably actually think, uh, I need to get uh, one tons and 40s so I can do what he's doing. (laughs) That's right. Or she, for that matter. (laughs) And you know, that's probably why that person had one tons and 40s, because they saw another big-ass truggy or something like Mm -hmm. that um, that was all fully built, and and they're like, oh, my Jeep needs to be like that, because you know, in in order for me to be able to do these kind of trails, I need to have that kind of a Jeep. No. No, you really don't. Um, and, And this story just proved that. This guy... With, with his core group of wheelers, um, you know, it, are, are out there doing it. 37s, 35s, you know, hey, I'd even probably keep up with them with 33s just because I know what I'm doing. You know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's that kind of mentality and it's having the skill set and the seat time to back up the equipment that you got. Matt, I love you, man, and your whole crew. You guys rock. You must have needed this every day. It's the Jeep Talk Show's must-have stuff, pick of the week for your Jeep. Now, I know this one's kind of coming in a little bit late in the season as we're pretty much well into fall and winter's just knocking on the door right now, but this is a, a Jeep hardtop and door removal toolkit. You know, all the necessary tools that you need to easily remove your hardtop or your doors on any 2007 to 2020 Jeep Wrangler. The toolkit contains a 3-8-inch a inch ratchet, a 10-millimeter socket, yeah, that's right, a 15-millimeter <laughs> socket, a a, a Torx 30, 40, and 50 bit, uh, one for the soft top, one for the hard top, and one for the doors. Includes a convenient storage pouch to keep all the tools in a neat and orderly fashion. And, well, okay, so are these top of the line snap on or Mac grade tools? Nah, no, probably not. Of course not. But what these are is a dedicated set of tools for a very specific job that can always be found in the same place. What's even better is you don't have to go digging around through your own tools to find what you need or take some of your own tools out of service to make a kit like this. And with its own storage pouch, well, it keeps things simple and safe to throw into the center console, glove box, or even a toolbox drawer for quick access. The link that we're going to be posting up for this toolkit is for the upgraded toolkit, which comes with a higher quality tool set, more bits, and a better case. And it's just like $2 or $3 more for, you know, the upgrade. So, hey, why not, right? You know, Josh, it's funny that you mentioned the 10 millimeter socket uh, because, uh, as you guys know, uh, the the hosts uh, of the show here know, I've uh, been in talks with uh, a company in China that is uh, putting together a deal where we will get literally thousands 
of 10 millimeter sockets uh, for a, a quarter inch drive, I believe. And uh, the reason why they're so it's it's so small and won't cheap is instead of ducking Jeeps, we're going to put 10 millimeter sockets <laughs> oh, on the I door handles. This. Fully on board. <laughs> That's perfect. The Let's door do handles. it. Let's start the craze right now. <laughs> so if you'd like to get in on, uh, I don't know what it's called. You could actually help us. If you'd like to get in on uh, put, <laughs> putting 10 millimeter sockets on oh, the door God. handles of Jeeps. Oh, my God. <laughs> Little card, you know, listen to the Jeep talk show. Yeah. You'll, you'll never be missing a 10 millimeter uh, socket again. <laughs> I found it. Here it is. I'm attaching it to your door. <laughs> I found it. Here it is. Yes, <laughs> like that. I found it. Here it is. And why is it always the last place you look? <laughs> That's right. Because you stop looking once you find it. Oh, there don't go. don't give away. That. <laughs> People need to come to that on their own. <laughs> well, hey, now that you must have your own dedicated hard top and Jeep door removal toolkit, we're going to make it easy for you. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com and look for the link in the show notes for episode 460. Is it legal for a host uh, to call in to the voicemail? Uh, I don't think so. I think we should just skip this one from Tammy. Well, I- as long as she's not trying to put in the phrase that pays, I think it's okay. But <laughs> uh, Okay, this time. Hey, this is Jeep Mama in Colorado. I listen to your show all the time. Um, seriously, though, um, now that I'm in the Zoom room, I have to listen to the show's after we record them. So I was just listening to last week's episode, and I just want to clarify. Um, hey, Josh, okay. I do carry a shovel. I just oh. haven't had to use it yet. <laughs> I knew it. And um, I knew it. you make some really good points about the forest fires. And the other good reason for having a shovel is when you're in the snow. Um, anyway, so I do carry a shovel. I just haven't used it. And I do carry gloves. I actually have about five or six pairs of gloves in my Jeep. Um I don't use them on my winch because I don't have a cable. I have synthetic line, and I'm not tearing up my hands. And um, I've actually really only used the winch on the trails a couple of times. But anyway, so I do carry gloves, and I do carry a shovel. Um, I just wanted to clarify that for all you out there listening. I'm, You know, as you know, I carry a lot of stuff in my Jeep. I was just sharing what I don't use. So anyway, I know Tony said that when you call in, make your voicemail calls, that they feel loved. So hopefully you guys will feel loved because I called in. Anyway, I'll see you guys Thursday night. This is clearly a way to extend her her time, her six minutes that she has for her segment. (laughs) (laughs) I knew she was going to do something, though, because, man, that shovel thing. (laughs) <laughs> she had to address oh, it with as, as much shit, crap that I gave her about, you know, yes. about that list. I, I'm not light, surprised the shovel. at all. Was oh, it, that son of a bitch. I got to call him and give was, him a piece all, of my mind. Was that all of it? Was this the flashlight and the shovel or was there something I else? Think, I think so. I, it no, was I'm the sure gloves, was. too. We did the oh, gloves, gloves and then the headlight. Yeah, Good. the headlight. And the pillow. Yeah. Good, because th- there would be another rebuttal when we go to the Zoom people here in the campfire <laughs> side right. chat if there was something else missing. No, that's it. We recovered. Everything's good. Oh, uh, such a such a great individual to pick on too, because you know it's gonna she's gonna get wound up about it. It's just uh, it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that the campfire has some smoke, Josh, but we haven't asked uh, asked for uh, the smoke in uh, your area and uh, Wendy's here area here in the next couple of weeks. How you guys doing with the, the fires and the smoke? Is it all cleared up? Well, uh, we got a lot of rain and stuff, and you know, wind patterns have changed. Uh, but uh, because of the weather patterns that have hit this last week, um, we had some wet and then a nice period of dry, and now we have some wet that's about to happen here uh, tomorrow as we record the show. Uh, just about every farmer in the area was starting to burn stuff. Um, and so I was on my way into work this morning, um, I, I drive by some farm fields, and, and um, uh, there was, as I came over this one little hill uh, and come around this corner, there's like this layer of smoke and fog and it was above the roadway but it was below the treetops and it was really cool it's just sort of this band and with the morning sun was kind of coming in on it and you know it was a cold morning this morning like i said it was the you know first uh first time of the year since the uh you know first uh, first frost uh if you will of the the season um and so you know kind of one of those crisp mornings and, and stuff and so uh you know the dew and everything was all frosty on the on the grass and the trees and everything and then you had this 
you had this, uh, you know, the, the, the crisp morning sun and, and, and the smoke and fog and everything. It was kind of cool, uh, but I had to put it on research because it kind of stunk. So I had to... <laughs> It sounds yeah, beautiful. Uh, you know, it was, I almost pulled over and took a picture, but I was like, ah, I got more important things to do. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> so so uh, it seems like that really reminds me of uh, fall time, at least at my parents' house, because it was uh, inacor- in- uh, inincorporated? No, not incorporated. So there wasn't mm-hmm. any HOA or anything. So people oh, would actually oh, rake up the leaves on their acre of property, and then they would set it ablaze. And with the stillness of the air and the, I think it was a temperature inversion because it was, you know, nippy outside Mm -hmm. and uh, it was sunny, but you would get these beams of light, not unlike what you see in heavenly uh, drawings uh, with the the smoke. And it was just gorgeous. And it wasn't so overwhelming that it it, it was, uh, that it was bad uh, to smell. It was just like that smell of fall that you as a kid, you know, uh, recognized almost uh, almost like uh, the new uh, freshly uh, cut grass uh, in yeah. the spring, so it was uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, of course, we digress as we often do. <laughs> Rabbit trails, yeah. <laughs> but no, that I mean, we could sort of tie this in. Let me go ahead and, and pull off my uh, pull up, put on my Segway hat here, and all right, here we're just going to go ahead and say, well, hey, it doesn't matter what kind of weather it is or uh, whatnot. Uh, smoke can uh, and cold can enter into your Jeep via a soft top or a hard top. So. We go ahead and we ask the question to our uh, our hosts and our listeners, and we we ask questions and, uh, and offer a topic each and every week, uh, something different each and every week. And we encourage you guys to pull up a chair, crack an adult beverage around the campfire, and and crack wise, and give us your opinion <laughs> as to what the topic will be and and what you have to say about whatever it is we're asking. And and what we're asking this week is what's better, soft tops or hard tops? Now, obviously, if you're driving a renegade, well, you probably aren't going to have too much of an opinion on this topic. But uh, regardless, we want to find out where you where you lay on this. And so uh, we have uh, six other of our listeners here around the campfire side chat tonight that we're going to go ahead and, and ask about this. And top of our list tonight is Chip or Chelms, Chomies, <laughs> uh, whatever we're going to call you this week. Where do you stand on uh, the tops for Jeeps? Are you a soft top guy or a hard top guy? Well, so on my JK, that's a two-door, I love my soft top. Um, now, I live in Illinois, so in the winter months, so probably in about the next, I don't know, sometime around the 1st of November, I'll probably throw my hard top back on. But at this point, I'm running a soft top, and I've run it all summer. Now, do you throw the hard top on because of snowfall, or is it just because of the, of the bitter cold, and it's a lot easier to uh, uh, to warm up the Jeep or to keep the wind out of you with the hard top? Well, it's just it's just warmer in general, and and mostly because of the snow. It, unfortunately, my Jeep lives outside, so it's a lot better using it with the, the hard top in the winter for just the weather that it's supposed to. My wife's got a four door AKU. And we run the hard top year round because it's your daily driver and it's a lot quieter and better for us. Now, now, Chip, I'll never know the answer to this, at least not as long as I'm living here in uh, southeast Texas. Is it a problem having a soft top with uh, large amounts of snowfall? I mean, will it will it uh, pull the, the soft top off or c- cause it to no. collapse? No, not at all. Not, not if it's a decent soft top. My TJ, I always just kept the soft top on it year round. Cool. Yeah, I will say that uh, older tops, if you're, let's say your top is 20 or 30 years old, there is a chance if it's seen a lot of snowfall. Uh, remember, when that snow starts to melt, it uh, it turns to water, and that water can collect. It uh, becomes heavy, and it can weigh the top down, stretch things out a little bit. Um, I mean, it's been known to happen. Uh, will it happen in every occasion, in, in, in every snowfall? No, of course not. Uh, and it also depends on the age of the top, how well it was kept, um, and the amount of snowfall, the amount of exposure... You know, it's got to be a perfect storm type of thing. But uh, thanks, Chip. Those are all really good points. And the noise thing is one of the things that I think is is my biggest uh, my biggest thing against the soft tops is is they're just so much more noisy than than a hard top. But you know, a Jeep isn't a quiet vehicle. Uh, so, Larry, where do you uh, sit on this topic? Do you are you uh, more on the soft top side or the hard top side? So we just got a, a soft top for us this year. We've ran hard top up to this point. And a couple of things I really like about the soft top was out on the trail, we start getting a little tippy, riding the next to the trees. You know, if I bump the soft top into the tree a little bit, it isn't such a big catastrophe as cracking that, that hard shell. But uh, 
I do like that hard shell in the winter time. It's a lot warmer, and uh, you know, it's the soft tops. It's got a lot of advantage. Obviously, everybody likes the open air in the summertime. But I take it off. You know, I took it off when it starts getting cold out, and and uh, put the hard top back on it. You know, plus in the, you know, I'm in the, I'm in Missouri, so we spray everything down with salt water when it starts looking like snow. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that Jeep goes through a daily. I I, I sign up for the uh, all you can eat car washes. <laughs> there you go. So it goes to the it goes to the car wash every day. And uh, wow, I was I was told not to take those soft tops through uh, the car wash on steady diet like that. Power off. Yeah, that that is that is one thing that they recommend. The, the detergents that are typically in commercial car washes are a little bit harder than what you'd find like on a part store shelf or uh, you know what you might be using out of a detail kit or something like that. And uh, and because of that, uh, they they do strip the uh, they do strip the, strip the soft top of its natural lubrication, its natural oils. And I know, and I know that when you're thinking about a denier like a soft top material that you don't think about oils and stuff like that. But if you've ever compared a new soft top to one that's been 30 years old and exposed to, you know, year after year, decade after decade of, of UV exposure and, and sheer cold and wetter and wets and all the seasons and everything like that, there is a stark difference. Uh, and just in feeling it, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there, Larry. You know, it's uh, it, so let me ask you, though, really quick. What was the main reason why you guys uh, made the decision to buy a soft top to begin with? Well, you know, I wanted to experience the, uh, you know, the top off. And uh, I I didn't want to, you know, get the interior wet or muddy. So I, the soft top was a good way to be able to, you know, to bring the outside in, if you will, without always trying to figure out what to do with the freedom panels or anything else. The ability just to flip that top back real easy, you know, it was pretty attractive. And, you know, with the JL, you don't have the zippers or anything if you want to pull the windows off. So it was just, it was just an easy way to experience the outside and, you know, not have to worry about the, the panels or anything. I like what you said there, the term that you used, bringing the outside in. Uh, that, that's a good way to put it. I, I like that. I might have to, we might have to, I don't know. Can we copyright that? I just have to look into that. We can steal that. <laughs> yeah. Tammy. All right. Now I know that, uh, that your Jeep has gone through some, uh, some different top. Hasn't it gone through a different top? I can't remember if you had a hard top, you went to a soft top or you, you had a soft top, you went to a hard top. I thought that you've had different tops. Am I mistaken? Um, bikini tops, I guess you would call it. Um, no, well, it's the sunshade, the spider web sunshade. Ah, okay. Maybe that's, uh, so that's what I'm not, about. Yeah, that's not really a top. I know I've had the same soft top. I had a, a the Sahara has soft top, and so did the Rubicon. Um, but I that's why I bought my Jeep, you know, for the soft top. Um, and I had it in Maryland, and it's winter there. Not as probably not as cold as Illinois, but um, those heaters in the Jeep Wranglers are they will heat up that whole Jeep pretty fast so the heat part never bothered me uh, yes they are noisy it's funny on <clears throat> one of the jeep forms the other day this lady had just bought a new jeep and she was like beside herself because it's just too noisy what can she do about it the ride is so rough it's just so noisy <laughs> and everyone's <laughs> and like people keep waving Hello? at me what the hell's wrong with them <laughs> that's that's just a part of the jeep life that's right you know? um I don't think I would ever do a hard top just because it's a Jeep. It's supposed to be topless and doorless, which I really haven't done that. But um, well, you've I taken, love you've the, taken the doors top. off finally, didn't you? It was like a real hard thing to do, but you got yeah. it off. And we did the no-no. I think Josh scolded me. I think that's Josh favorite, Josh's favorite uh, thing. I think so. It's, I there's a thing. I'm <laughs> so bad at it. <laughs> it's, it's all good, Josh. No, we used the um, one of the floor jacks with the piece of... Um, two by four to lift the door off. Um, but I just had it off for that little bit and I didn't like it, but actually um, out here in Colorado now wheeling with Neil in these older Jeeps, like the CJ and stuff with the doors off, as long as I'm on a trail, not going like 55 miles an hour down the highway, I'm okay with it. Um, 
You but should, maybe the next time I go wheeling, I'll take my doors off. I, I, I know you're uh, financially challenged right now, but uh, if you get a chance or maybe there uh, some used ones uh, show up, uh, try some yeah. tube doors. Mm. Uh, my yeah. uh, my youngest daughter uh, has like been enjoying a, taking the the, the top and the windows and stuff off of her uh, her Jeep, and uh, I had bought a set of two tube, tube doors for my uh, my wife's Jeep, and I said, hey, you wanna you run wanna run the tube doors, and she really liked it. Yeah. Uh, I think that 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 little bit extra of you still have the the outside in type thing, but uh, but you have a little more protection. You don't have to worry about your your. Uh, don't don't quote me on the logic of this, but you don't really have to worry about your uh, cell phone sliding out the that wide well. gaping hole. <laughs> it's a little it's a little more comforting. Well, and typically tube doors are also a little bit lower profile, yeah. and and so you do have a much larger opening next to you than you would if you just you know un you know, had the half door you know if you un it took the top top half of the door off you know that sort of thing unzipped it um, you know that that sort of thing, but. Um, no, I mean Tammy, you, you did answer the question that I was going to ask you: is if if you if you had your druthers, you, you found a deal on a, on a hardtop, would you find a, a would you get a hardtop for it? Uh, but you already answered it. You said you said no. You know, it's the main reason why you bought the Jeep was for the soft top for for all of you know what the what it means to have a soft top. So um, and and obviously, I mean, for living in, in uh, from Maryland to Colorado um, and being in in all the different states that you've been in over the last year or so. Uh, you've certainly been exposed to all sorts of different climates and stuff, and and so that gives you, uh, you know, a good a good understanding of of you know different protection of what the soft top and the hard top can give you in the different climates. What about you, Wendy? Um, do you guys have a preference, or do you have a preference rather as to as to a uh, hard or soft top for the Jeep? Well, ours actually has a hard top, and I've never been in a Jeep with a soft top, so oh, really? I don't really. Oh wow! I know. I'm really Sounds shocked. interesting, but that's. This is my first Jeep, so I've had a hard top. I don't really see any uh, benefit in taking it off at this point because I like the fact that it was so hot here half the time that we like the air conditioner. So, And then I can run it all winter without having to worry about being cold. So for me, I don't have any desire to do that. Although hearing everybody else, I'm like, hmm, maybe we should consider a bikini top or well, taking it, the doors off sometime it, or it's, something. It's know. similar to riding yeah. the motorcycle because you you got that open feel, but you have you yeah. still have the protection of a couple of hundred pounds of metal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. it, it sounds intriguing. Let's put it that way. So I'm not going to be a no on a soft top. We just haven't ever done it. So there you go. Well, you know, this the spring and fall are perfect times for that because it's not too hot. It's not too cold. I mean, obviously, you've got snow on the forecast. So maybe it's a little bit late. I mean, that window might have closed already. Uh, but, yeah. you know, I mean, at least out here uh, in the Northwest, uh, you know, the you have a, a short window of some mild temperatures, uh, some mild temperate uh, climates where, you know, it's it's not going to, you don't have a high risk of rain, but at the same time, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, the a bunch of dew on the seat when you get in in the morning or something like that. So, uh, you know, I suppose it is just a matter of, of taste and preference. Um, now, Tony, where, where do you, where do you fa fall on this? I, you, you've got a, you know, three, four Jeep family. Uh, you know, I know that there's been multiple tops floated around, uh, fr floated around the Jeep. So where, where do you and I, the wife, obviously we know where she kind of stands, but where, where's your personal preferences on this? i I personally, uh, well, let me, let me back up. Uh, when, bef before actually owning a Wrangler, I had no idea what the benefits or detriments were to ha hard top, soft top. Uh, first Jeep that we got, uh, first TJ, a uh, Wrangler that we got, was a, a hard top for the reasons why I mentioned uh, that I wasn't sure my wife would uh, like the noisy environment. Uh, but I personally don't see any reason for a hard top now. Um, it, it, it's, it takes up room. You uh, either have to have uh, some sort of mechanical device uh, to remove uh, the top. I mean, it's a couple hundred pounds. Uh, you could, uh, I'm sure you could uh, lift it and take it off, but it, they're so expensive. Why would you want to take the, uh, the chance of damaging it? Uh, taking that thing off and sitting it down by yourself, so because uh, it's you know it's it's unwieldy, it has uh, you know it's it's big, so it's kind of hard to, to to hold on to and maintain uh, the the direction when you're taking it off. Um, so it just takes up room. It's uh, it's something that uh, re requires uh, a machine or multiple people. Uh, uh, the soft top can be taken off uh, easily by uh, women. Uh, the short women may need a, a little stepping stool or something and maybe a, a, a zipper extension to, uh, to get those zippers on and off. Uh, so, uh, yeah, absolutely, 100% soft top. And um, I, the only downside to uh, taking the, uh, 
the the soft the, the sides and the back off and uh, the 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 top that we have you can actually flip the uh, driver passenger side back so you can really get a nice open air thing but still have some uh, coverage in the back um, the only downside to that is is if you're taking a, a long uh, trip uh, it's absolutely wonderful seeing everything smelling everything uh, really experiencing that open the air bugs environment. Bugs in your teeth, the knots in your hair. Well, we, oh, it's wonderful. We don't we don't put the the windshield down, Josh. Uh, but uh, you can't have a conversation. Now I know some may mm. say that's not a bad thing, but sometimes <laughs> it's nice to point out without having to scream. Look at that over there, or look at that, or is that a UFO? Uh, I would uh, I would highly recommend somebody come up and invent a uh, intercom system for jeepers oh. that are driving around with the uh, top off. It's got to be Bluetooth, a little earbud, and that's it, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like the motorcycle thing. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, 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 Wendy, bike to bike you, systems might work. Do you guys uh, use a communication system for your, uh, when you guys yeah. are riding the motorcycle, or you just yeah, we poke do. Bill it's in the all, side? No, 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 it's all hooked up, it's in, it's, it's in our helmets, absolutely. She's got a little shiv right between the seventh and eighth rib, and it works <laughs> That's really right. Good. That's, that means it's, Perfect. when you feel the point, that means you need to pull over because I need to take a bathroom yeah. break. That's yeah, right. But we're making break. great time. <laughs> sharp, sharp pain. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> now, I'm going to go over to, back to our listeners. Travis, uh, you, you've had uh, multiple Jeeps in your life. I know you get the YJ right now. I can't remember if that thing's got a top on it or not. Most of the pictures I've seen, I, I think it's been topless. So where, where do you fall on the soft top or hard top topic? Well, my first Jeep ever, actually, Tony, you'll be proud, was the red 89 YJ and had a gray soft top on it. Absolutely loved it. Um, that's what my goal was. I wanted a soft top Jeep. Um that Jeep was totaled, you know, a year and a year and a half into having it and found the black Jeep that I currently still own. Um, and it had a hard top and I'm happy. I have the hard top. Um, I love it. I've got, you know, all the seasons here. I've got summer, spring, fall, winter, and I love my hard top. Now, granted, I don't run it 24 seven. I don't really run a mm. top at all. Um, here in the next couple months, I will put it on for winter. Um, do I need to? No, not in reality. I, I probably don't, but I will just in case. I've got to drive my Jeep to work, let Katie drive my truck, you know, whatever the situation may be. We do get ice on the roads. We don't get snow. Yeah. We'll get ice. Um, that said, hard tops are convenient. They are space consuming. They are, you know, I'll remove mine by myself or put it on by myself. It's not easy, like Tony was mentioning. It is a pain in the ass um they make a thousand things that you can do but that's just buying more accessories i love just jeep being topless um that's how i run it 99.9 percent .9 of the time here in the next week two weeks three weeks you know when i drop below 80 again today was beautiful um i put a hard top on it and run it like that till march and then i'm topless again all year round wow um, that jeep that sounds topless. really nice yeah it's just I love my hard top. I would never get rid of it. Um, soft tops, the convenience of them. I, I don't like a soft top when it's down. I'd rather remove the entire thing. I hate the frame, the just the yeah. whole contraption back there. On the back half, I'm like, it's ugly. Um, on the new Jeeps, on the old Jeeps, every Jeep, it just it looks tacky down. Yeah, I don't uh, blame yep. you there. I I would, I'm really glad that we went with the best top, uh, Trek Top NX, because it uh, doesn't have a frame. And I, I, I agree with you there. It just, just take it off. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm 100 percent with terrible. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm with both you guys there. I, I don't like that either. When when the soft tops and it's all like crinkled down and you come, it almost sits like at a wedge in the back. I don't know. It just it doesn't look right. I mean, yes, it is easy. I get it. I get the the convenience aspect of it. Yeah, there's no but, storing you know, it. It's just with and, you. And, and, well, yes, um, and, but you know, like Travis said, you know, there are a million other things and, and contraptions out there that that will enable you to easily remove the vehicle or remove the uh, the top from your Jeep. Um, you know, we we had a a, a, a great uh, company here on the show not all that long ago, J Bar, mm -hmm. uh, which I right. think is probably one of the best systems out there for removing the top, hard top from a Jeep, uh, which makes it a one person job, makes it very easy, and and if set up properly. Um, you can, you know, have it in the garage to where you can still store the top and still pull the Jeep in it all at the same time. Yes, they do take up a lot of room. I will give you all that, that, that storing a top, um, unless you have a large garage or extra space, it can become cumbersome to find a place for the top, 
uh, for the Jeep because it's it's a half a vehicle almost, you know. So uh, so I get it in in that regard. Bob, what about you? Bob, are you a hard top or a hard top or a soft top guy? So normally I run a hard top, and then in the warm months a bikini top. This last spring, uh, for the first time, I did a bolus uh, soft top. Really like that. Um, being able to take the side and back off and just run it like it's a bikini top. If it's going to rain or we're going a little farther, want to run the air conditioner, we can throw the sides on real easy. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of very positive remarks on the bolus tops. A lot of people are, are uh, becoming very instant, immediate fans uh, of the bolus tops because um, they, they don't rattle in the wind. They seem to be quieter uh, wind noise wise driving down the road. Obviously, you know, road noise, tire noise. Uh, the top isn't going to do anything for you re regarding that, uh, but just the wind coming over the top of the vehicle. It seems the uh, the, uh, the the bolus ones are a little bit quieter um, than than the other ones, uh, and obviously, like like you said, a little bit more configurable as well, a little bit easier to use. It just seems to be like a, a very positive uh, response and positive reviews from the bolus tops. Bob, I'm glad to hear your experience is the same. Now we're going to go over to uh, Chris from sevenslats.com. And Chris, uh, where, do you sit, where do you sit on the soft top and hard top debate? Hard top all the way. My YJ Why was a hard that? top. Uh, my, well, just, it, I live in Michigan. Obviously, the winter helps. But uh, uh, I, I just, for me, I can always take the top off myself. Um, my YJ was a hard top. My buddy at the uh, YJ at the same time bought it new as well. It was a soft top and just too many pieces, parts. Uh, I had an opportunity years ago to rent a jk four-door uh, in mm -hmm. arizona and it, i was there for a week put the soft top down i had pieces parts on the on the extra bed in the hotel room i just i understand <laughs> in the jl from what i've seen it's gotten a lot better but i agree with you i don't like the look of it you know, when yeah. it's when you're driving around with the soft top and it just to me it's just too much you get a little more security obviously with a with a hard top uh than you would with a soft top and uh, I, I believe, again, for me, it's simple for me to remove my top. And uh, I think with the JK, the Freedom Panels and the JL, they've just improved that system. So you're semi-topless taking the whole hard top with you. I just think that's a, a great system. You know, I'd agree with you there, Chris. I'm, I'm a big hard top fan myself. I, I have a little bit of a soft spot for the soft tops that have the angled back on them. Something about those have just... On the right Jeep with the right gear on it, it just it looks right. Um, but at the same time, I've just I've always been a hard top fan. It makes me think about this is the how this is how a Jeep is supposed to look. Now, yeah, we can go back to you know the Willys days. Um, you know, military Jeeps they didn't have hard tops. They were all canvas. They were all soft tops. That's right. And and some would say that's how a Jeep is supposed to look. That's that's the history of Jeep. That's that's where you know the the you know the the heritage is. Um, so, you know, all of them moving forward should have at least pay homage to that Jeep in some in some sense when it comes to the top. Um, but I, I disagree. Um, for all the reasons that all of you have said, I agree wholeheartedly, whether it's weather, whether it's noise, whether it's looks, all of it. Uh, the hard top is the way to go for, uh, for protection, for security, for all of that. Now, are there times and places uh, where a soft top might be better? You know, absolutely. If you live in a temperate climate where it never rains or something like that, um, or you can afford to have an open air Jeep year round, maybe you live in Hawaii or something like that. You know, I, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, then I, I can see the merit of not having any top at all. Uh, if I had my druthers, it would be hard top all the time. I can't thank all of you guys enough for chiming in, for pulling up to the campfire side chat tonight and, uh, and giving your opinion on this topic. It was a good one tonight. Got to see a little bit of where you guys all stand on a very interesting topic, a little bit of a debate, whether it's soft top or hard top. Where do you, the listeners, stand uh, on this debate? Why don't you go ahead and give us a call? You can call our voicemail line. You can write us an email. Any number of ways to reach out to us. We'd sure love to hear what you have to say about this topic and any topic that we're doing for Campfire Side Chat. We're doing a different one every week. And next week, why don't you join in on us? Uh, the best way to do that would be to follow us on Facebook or receive notifications via our newsletter. Very easy to sign up for that newsletter as well. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You can find a link to click and sign up. It's very easy to sign up. We're not going to spam you. You get one email a week. It's all about the newsletter. It's all about some inside information about giveaways and other things that we're doing here on the show. And it's just as easy to unsubscribe as it is to subscribe. 
Josh, I thought I'd mention something to you that you may not have thought of. Uh, the, the the Willys Jeep, of course, had the uh, soft top, but uh, there may have been two reasons for that. Uh, it's easier to ship a uh, Jeep in a box without a top. Mm. True. <laughs> and uh, a soft top doesn't weigh as much, which was one of the main concerns yeah. for the military when they uh, wanted that Jeep built, which is uh, we found out from... Uh, uh, the original Jeep's uh, author that uh, that was one of the big concerns and one thing well, yeah, they couldn't meet. You're trying to drop them out of airplanes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, they, 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 you got to have so much on, uh, you know, cargo weight. Um, and the best way to do that is to start dropping weight by removing half the top of the vehicle. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so. that's, uh, that's certainly, so maybe, it. maybe it's not such a, such as a, a heritage as it was just a requirement for war. Hmm. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. Well, that's it for the show for this week, my fellow Jeeper. Until next week, be sure to take a moment to leave the show a review on whatever platform you listen to us through. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Whatever you do, make sure you do it good. And if you can't do it good, at least do it right. If you can't do it right, at least do it safely. And if that's not possible, do it so they will never, ever let you live it down or ask you to do it again. Podcasting since 2010. 